Well, good morning. It is March 27th, 2022, and uh, it's a Sunday, and I had a little bit of a rough uh, day the other day, and I wanted to share with you what I did to transform it into something that was a little, a little more positive. -er. <laughs> and we are in a time of unprecedented change when there is so much troubling and disturbing and frightening bad news that sometimes it's easy <laughs> the door is frozen shut. Sometimes it's easy to get discouraged. Sometimes it's easy to just give up. Sometimes it's easy to think, I got an egg. Sometimes it's easy to think that it's hopeless and pointless and dumb. <laughs> For me anyway, the other day, I don't know what it was that triggered it, but something that I saw or thought triggered a wave of negative feelings, a wave of just that little voice that I've talked about in the past, that little voice versus, or the, the little mind versus the big mind. The little mind that's like, no, this is dumb, or you can't do that or why bother nobody nobody cares you know the uh that kind of internalized critical bully i don't know i have it and i think a lot of us have it from talking to people over the years and from years of therapy um years of doing therapy with others and years of working on myself and listening to other people and listening to myself. <laughs> it's so easy to get discouraged, particularly in the face of, of the war in Ukraine and the next, you know, the pandemic for the last three years. Like, what are we gonna do? What's the point? And I wanna challenge you as I challenge myself to to fight that, to not give in to it. <laughs> and to kind of set the mood, to set the, set the table today for a spiritual but not religious worship experience. Here's a song. Enjoy and I'll be right back after the song. Boom. Break the wine glass Fall into the breath of the glass blower Break the boundaries That used to keep you small Break the silence Fall into the breath of the sound Break the patterns Fall to your knees on the Garden, 
glimpse the world through the gardener's eyes. Has her heart hardened? Is there no room left for surprise? Break it up. All right, well, I hope the song helped. <laughs> the reality is I write songs not because I want to, but because I have to. This path is a little slippery here in the snow that we're having. Late, late snow, early spring snow. The snow is late, the spring is early. 
We're only a week into spring now in the North Country. So what I want to talk about today are two acronyms. There's FUD, F-U-D, Fear, Uncertainty, and Doubt. And then there's another abbreviation. <laughs> See if I can get this out of the wind here a little bit. The other abbreviation is A-I-A. AIA. AIA. So FUD, Fear, Uncertainty, and Doubt versus Awareness, Intention, and Action. <laughs> and I don't know what it was that came in the other day, but I just, I think it was Friday, two days ago now. It might have been Thursday, but <laughs> the days are blending. I just, I just had this feeling, this kind of almost a physical sense of dread. I'd, I guess I'd watch the news and the fear of nuclear annihilation just kind of came in at me. And the fact that for almost 50 years now, I've been attempting as best I can to get these 500 songs that I've written out into the world where they could do some good and I think I saw a piece by Rick Beato on um, YouTube and he played a song. He's a music producer and he has uh, probably over a million followers on YouTube. And he talks about music and he teaches, you know, he teaches about what is really good and why it's good. <laughs> and he played a song that he had co-written and that uh, two amazing female vocalists sang and, uh, it's a song that just went nowhere. It just kind of went to die in a digital dustbin, in the digital dustbin of, of modern times. And the fact that this guy with all his music industry connections couldn't get a song out <laughs> kind of made me feel like, well, if he can't do it, why would I bother? Why would I bother doing something that's so clearly impossible? And then that led me to the next dumb thing that I do, which is farming. You know, everybody knows you can't make a living as a farmer. Everybody knows that unless you have, you know, 10,000 acres and a corporate, you know, behemoth behind you, that you can't make a living as a farmer. <laughs> so I'm doing two dumb things. I'm making music that I can't seem to get anybody to listen to. This is my negative thinking, okay? This is not what I truly believe, but it's what I fall into sometimes when I am weak. <laughs> you know, not only don't I can I get my music out into the world, nobody wants to hear it. And let's ex let's accelerate it. I don't know if you do this, but th I'm just giving you an example of what I do. You know, not only can I do music, I can't do this farming. No one's going to buy my pork. You know, there's no way I can do sheep. There's no way I can do beef. You know, <sighs> growing greens is ridiculous. It, I would have to sell so many greens to even just barely make the cost that it cost me to plant them and blah, 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 and all, just all this negative stuff. And so, let's see if I can find another little spot here. <coughs> so I started doing what I have trained myself to do over the years when these moments happen. And I want to share that with you today. First of all, I realized, as I have realized in the past, that anxiety, that feeling of the worst possible thing is going to happen, that focus on how bad everything is and how just horrible the world is, how horrible people are, how horrible politicians are, the government is bad, uh, the pharmaceutical companies are evil, <laughs> everything that we think that some, some of them have some truth in them, you know, there is corruption, there is mega pharmaceutical companies that, you know, are just filling us with drugs many of which are debatable on whether they help. But when that stuff comes, when that stuff comes, it's, it's not the truth. 
there are good things. So in order to think all the bad things, what do you have to do? You have to hold ideas and images in your mind that get you that physical visceral reaction of dread or depression or sadness or whatever it is that is kind of coming at you. And I think I have to head towards the greenhouse because it's cold out here. Uh, yeah, I got so much brush everywhere. I don't know where to walk. I guess I'll try it this way. And, and just exactly like that, like I just took a path and I was like, oh, it's all tangled and there's a lot of brush here. Uh, I have to take a different path. Well, that's life. <laughs> Sometimes the way is blocked. Sometimes it's permanent. Most of the time, it's temporary. <laughs> I was clearing saplings out of the pig's enclosure. So anxiety, after years of studying this and helping people with it, and hopefully the wind isn't too bad here, anxiety is thinking about what you do not want to have happen. And maybe on the other side, hope is thinking about what you do want to have happen. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it's wishful thinking. It's not based in reality, but other times the anxiety is false. Sometimes you're making big pictures inside, inside your mind on your mental movie screen of how horrible the world is. And that's not entirely accurate either. So anxiety is thinking, let's get in here. Whew. Anxiety is thinking about what you don't want to have happen and making it big and bright in your internal world. And that's a recipe for pain, right? So I caught myself making pictures of what a dummy I am to try to do all this music stuff, to try to do all this farming stuff, to try to start a church in, a, in an age when, when fewer and fewer people go to church <laughs> and the fastest growing denomination is spiritual but not religious. <laughs> oh, I just knocked that over, all right. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Whew. So if you have anxiety, 99% of the time it is you thinking about what you do not want to have happen. And some of that is helpful. <clears throat> you know, I don't, I don't want to be cold in the winter, so I'm going to check and make sure I have, you know, fuel in my tank my propane or my oil tank and I have wood for my wood stove that I have clothing um, so that I don't perish from the cold. That's good anxiety. You think ahead to the future. That's what we humans can do. We can imagine the future. And I don't know if other animals can do that, but we can. We can imagine the future. So when you imagine when you imagine a future that's horrible, your body doesn't know that it's the future. Your body thinks it's now. Whatever you are holding in your mind, your unconscious mind thinks it's real. But it's just an image in your mind. It's just a thought. So in order to stop that, <laughs> oh, my nose is running. Who had the great idea of doing a sermon outside? See, my little mind's like, that's dumb. Why did you do it that way? Yeah. <laughs> right? That is the battle that we face every day. <laughs> Thinking the worst things, imagining the worst things, saying the worst things to ourselves, when in actuality, we're doing the best we can. Right? So the way to fight those negative pictures, that anxiety, is to think of something different, to replace those images with something better. 
And there's a, there's a tool that I used for years with anxiety clients and with myself, it's called the timeline tool. And literally you imagine floating up above your timeline, going out into your future and turning and looking back and seeing it all work out better than you could possibly imagine, right? And then turning from that point and looking out ahead to the, the next bit of future and imagining it getting even better, right? Imagine the future even better than the past. And if you're listening to the news, you're just gonna get a bunch of, oh, this is horrible, right? And the, this is horrible, it's, it's kind of good to be aware and one of the reasons I'm so motivated to grow my own food is because I've paid too much attention, perhaps, to the news in the last three years and to the fragility of our supply line and to the empty shelves in the grocery store and to the fact that our food is laced with all kinds of chemicals and toxins that, you know, so many people think they have a gluten intolerance when the reality is they're reacting to the fact that Roundup is used to dry most of our commodity crops. And so there, there are chemicals in the food that are causing us to be sick. <laughs> and so I wanna do something about that, right? So fear, uncertainty, and doubt is the current state. Awareness, intention, and action is the antidote. So be aware of how you are thinking and how your thinking is causing you to feel. Intend something different and then take action to do something different. So that's the visual anxiety. Now, the other piece is that little voice that's auditory, that's talking to us all the time that's saying, that's dumb. Mark, no one's going to listen to this sermon. No one, you know, no one wants to go to your new church. No one wants to buy your pork. No one wants to hear your music, right? That voice, and that's my version of it. You have your version of it. That voice can be silenced by replacing it with something else. And the key to replacing it is to ask yourself a powerful, positive why or how question. And the one that I use is why does it work out better than I can possibly imagine? Why does it work out better than I can possibly imagine? And sometimes I'll do it in the second person as well. Why does it work out better than you can possibly imagine, Mark? And then also the we. Why does it work out the plural? Why does it work out better than we can possibly imagine? Sometimes I'll put my name on it, Mark. Hey, Mark, why does it work out better than you could possibly imagine? Mark, why does it work out better than I could possibly imagine? Mark, why does it work out better than we can possibly imagine? And I say it a lot whenever I'm filling up uh, a container or watering a plant, I count. One, why does it work out better than I could possibly imagine? Two, why does it work out better than I could possibly imagine? When I do my stretching exercises, I say, one, why does it work out better than I could possibly imagine? Two, why does it work out better than I could possibly imagine? Because I am such a negative thinker, people. I'm such a negative thinker that I have to force myself to replace my negative self-talk. And it's been years of practice and I'm still practicing, still working at it. So if I'm any indication of the way you are, you might need to practice this too. And I actually put it to music, I put it in a song, and uh, I will play that song after the talk, all right? So we'll, we'll end with that song so you can kind of get that into your neurology. But for now, if you were with me in a congregational setting, we would chant it together, we would say it together, we would just, it would be the congregational in unison thing that we say, right? Why does it work out better than I can possibly imagine? Oh Lord. <laughs> Why does it work out better than we can possibly imagine? And so we have a visual 
we have an auditory. Those are two tools, just two tools that when the dread comes in, when the depression comes in, when the anxiety comes in, those are two things we can do to shift it, to change it. And then the third thing, because we're, we're working with three points, right? The first thing is to visualize what you do want to have happen. The second thing is to chant, why does it work out better than I can possibly imagine, to replace that negative internal dialogue or monologue or critical inner parent or whatever it is that you are psychologically sabotaging yourself with verbally to yourself, auditorily inside your head, or even out loud. I, I hear people say it all the time, you know, why is it never easy? Well, because you're asking that question, why is it never easy? We need to ask better questions. Why does it work out better than I can possibly imagine? It might seem hard, right? But I don't have all the evidence, right? This might, where the world is right now might be setting the foundation for the most lasting peace in the history of humankind. It might be setting a revolution of, of peace as the people of the world basically go, you know what? War is insane. Why? We have to stop it forever, <laughs> right? Maybe that's what's really happening. I don't know. Maybe the challenge to the American democracy that was put forth by the former president as he refused to concede to an election that he lost, maybe that is actually really good for our democracy. Maybe the pandemic is really good as we learn how to communicate and protect ourselves from future pandemics. I don't know. But holding those thoughts in your mind creates a different result than if you're holding the disaster in your mind and making it big and bright and, and loud and close. Like stop, shrink it down, put it behind you, bring up new pictures of what you want the world to be like. Your neurology will thank you. And finally, the third point is that we can't just sit around changing our pictures and changing our self-talk without actually taking action. Like I am taking action by recording these thoughts today and putting them out where very few people will listen. And that's okay. At some point, somebody might listen, but I have to take the action. I have to grow my own food and grow enough so that I can hopefully feed other people and perhaps even use it as a fundraiser for this church so that I can afford to hire musicians to create the best worship music, the best modern musical monastery that I can possibly create. Even if it takes me the next 30 years of my life, I have to begin today. I have to, because if I don't take action, I get stuck and I go down a rabbit hole of dark depression <laughs> and taking action helps to shift the energy of whatever you're doing. So the other day when I was feeling just this dark, deep dread starting to flow in, I looked in the backyard and I saw all those piles of wood and the, the, the ground was starting to thaw and it was too muddy to use the tractor. So I got the wheelbarrow and I resisted for a while, but I got the wheelbarrow and I walked down the hill and I filled it up, not so full that I couldn't manage, but I, I put, you know, some wood in that wood bar wheelbarrow, that wood barrow. I put some wood in the wheelbarrow. I put some wood in the wheelbarrow and I pushed it up the freaking hill and I stacked it and then I went back and I did three more loads. And by the time I had finished that fourth load of wood, I was, I was, you know, I had to take breaks throughout the whole thing to catch my breath. I was ready to take a break and I had shifted it. I had focused on 
what I wanted to have happen. I imagine my yard, the backyard, basically a silvo pasture. And I imagined uh, a small little group of sheep in that silvo pasture, keeping the brush down naturally without petrochemicals. <laughs> and I imagined next winter having warm wood warm wood next winter having a house that i could heat with wood a warm house that i could heat with seasoned wood that i had brought up the hill and i just the whole time i chanted to myself why does it work out better than i could possibly imagine and that enabled me to shift something in about an hour that in the past would have been a two-week depression experience. Manic depression bipolar runs in my family, on my dad's side. On my mom's side, alcoholism, right? <clears throat> we all have rocks that we have to roll away. We all have family stuff that you know, as kids, we took in that to this day might be stopping us or might be torturing us internally. It is up to us, instead of giving in to the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, it is up to us as disciples of the Creator God, whatever you believe about that. It is up to us as children of God to take action, to become aware of what we're doing, set a different intention with all our heart, with all our soul, with our mind, with our body, with our spirit, and then to take action in accordance with that intention. Aia! <laughs> Instead of FUD people, Aia! Awareness, intention, action, awareness, intention, action, awareness, intention, action. So today, your challenge, your weekly challenge is to spend the week becoming aware of how the thoughts you think affect the way you feel and set the intention to change those thoughts, to change the pictures, to change the self-talk, replace it with why does it work out better than I can possibly imagine if you can't think of anything better. And this one works. I've tested it. I've taught it to hundreds of people and it seems to work because it engages your unconscious mind to find the evidence to support the presuppositions in that why question which is a little more than I want to get into right now, but then take action. For me, it's growing food. It's recording songs. Whether anybody eats them or anybody listens to them or watches these videos, I still have to do it. And I have to do it without expectation of result. I have to do it because this is how I stay sane. This is how I heal myself. This is how I do whatever I can do to make my little bit of the world a little bit better. Even though there's so much bad news. Here in my life, I can focus on the good news. And that's what the gospel was all about. The good news. The good news is that God is love. The good news is that God doesn't make junk. The good news is that we are all waves upon the sea of awareness. And why does it work out better than we can possibly imagine? Today, I wish you all the best. I'm going to leave you with a song. And I hope you listen. Because I will. I'm doing it for me. And if it helps you, then I have served a greater purpose. And that makes me feel good. And I want you to feel good too. Because when we feel good, then we can actually make a positive difference in the world. When we feel bad, I don't think we're as effective. So, today, 
a week into spring, a snowy March Sunday in the North Country of New York State. I wish you all the best. Peace, love, and grooviness. Amen. Boom.
Don't, Don't you, you feel, feel better? better? I feel better. Well, I hope you enjoyed the songs. I hope you enjoyed the message. And uh, I got to go in the house now and upload all this stuff and send it out into the world to do whatever good it can do today or into the future. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this content, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please ring the bell. Please leave a comment below. Please share this with someone who could use a little positive energy today, a little hope, a little peace, a little love, a little grooviness. Over and out. I'll see you next week, hopefully. Peace. Peace. Peace.